All right, so I have been promising a budget carnivore shopping haul video for some for a little while now, practically since I started the channel a month ago. And uh, first, thanks for everyone who subscribed over the course of the last month, despite the technical difficulties I've had, including shaky camera footage. And we're still dealing with some of those now, but we finally got in the mail like late last night, after I, long after I filmed all these clips, all of the, the equipment, most at least most of the equipment I need to up the sort of video camera quality things of things aside from me sitting here at my desk. So thanks for your patience on that. Um, at least one of the clips you'll see had to be filmed with my camera phone because the camera that we have decided it was just gonna crap out on us <laughs> a partial part of the way through things. But all that having been said, just wanna manage some expectations here. I wanna I want to show you what I had gotten here because this is the, what's key here is the information. How can you save money on a carnivore diet? because we are told carnivore is expensive because people are living off of ribeye steaks. You don't have to live off ribeye steaks, but I will show you something I got here that were ribeyes a great deal. The key here is to know your stores, know when to shop and when to hit those markdowns. This is gonna be something I'm going to hit over and over and over again in future videos. So I was, I live about 40 miles east of Oklahoma City, and I was traveling much closer to the city recently at some odd hours for, some, for an early morning appointment I had. I decided to get there a little earlier than usual because I knew there was a grocery store that I needed to hit up to see about, you know, post-appointment breakfast when I got home. So I went to the store. It was ridiculously early in the morning when I went. And I'm glad I did because I got some magnificent things here. So why don't you take a look at the, these clips here? And the final clip I'm going to show you is not marked down meat. It's something I made a reference to earlier, uh, a full ribeye roast. But that'll be after these short clips of the budget saving materials that I got. So let's have a look at those clips. So these are some marked down sirloin steaks that I got from a local regional chain in the Oklahoma City metro area. And what you're looking at are sirloin steaks. You need to look for stickers like this, at least at that store. They all have, every store has its own sticker. But I got these sirloin steaks for around $10 for more than like half, a pound and a half or so each package. These are well worth it. So keep an eye out for these kind of stickers. And remember, it's easy to add fat to your meat. Next up, we have some of these T-bone steaks. Look at the intramuscular fat you see there. The, again, they're blurry, but the, because these are taken from the really bad video I took, but they, these are thin, relatively thin cut, multiple steaks in a pack, well worth the trip. This was a lot of intramuscular fat and around $12 for a pound of T-bone steaks. These did not last long in my freezer. <laughs> Let's just put it to you that way. What, uh, this was a great deal, I'm not gonna lie. And this is my ch favorite cheap cut of beef here. The uh, short back ribs, these are not terribly meaty, but I got these for like two or three bucks a pound. So they were not a bad deal at all. I'm just gonna keep this part really short here though. Before we get to the final video clip, I wanna show you the creme de la creme, we'll say that I wanna show you next. I'm gonna show you the preparation for these ribs because these ribs were so extraordinarily cheap. They were around $2 or something each that here you're seeing me prepare them for the smoker. I'm just taking, you know, teaspoons of Redmond's real salt and applying it liberally over uh, the meaty side of the rib. And then here we are at the Rectech 1250 smoker. Pardon the uh, foil drip pan <laughs> below it. I need to clean my smoker. It's probably a project for the weekend. But look, look at the golden color on that. It's a gorgeous looking. And then here we have the final product after a couple of hours of smoking. The This is... You can see the smoke ring there. You can see a, that ton of fat in it and just that gorgeous color. And yeah, that salt managed to get pretty deep into that meat. They're not the meatiest cut of rib. And I ended up eating almost all of them in one sitting because again, it's just not the meatiest cut. And now we get to the main event. I got in a crazy deal that I will need some specialized tools for here. And so we're gonna start with this cutting board. This is a bamboo cutting board that I got on Amazon that has rulers and a the drain edge built into the, the board, the latter not being that big of a deal, but having a ruler built into your cutting board can be very, very handy when you're cutting certain kinds of things. And notice I've got this on top of another meat cutting board. There's a good reason for that. But here we have a, you need a sharp 
knife for what I'm about to do here. And this is a doll strong uh, knife that I've used for cutting everything from briskets to like I'm about to do here, large roasts. The thing has a nice sharp cutting edge, although I might need to take it to a knife sharpener here shortly. So you probably wanna know where you can find one of those near you or buy a home one. I'm not decided if I'm gonna buy a home one or not, or just take these things to a professional. But here is why I need this. Because as I mentioned in a grocery video last week, I one of my stores nearby had deals on uh, what they're calling value cuts ribeye roast. These are whole ribeye roasts. They're barely trimmed at all. And I wasn't sure if I was going to get it because of that half cow I, that I was waiting on coming. I bought this and then like the next day or two days later, I had that half cow. One of these roasts is for my mother. And these are a crazy good deal. These were $6.49 a pound for these things. And so here I am unpackaging this thing. We're uh, taking the cellophane wrapper off of it and, you know, using a good pair of kitchen shears, which is what these, what those things are for. And again, you're getting a pretty good uh, side view of how big this thing is. And note that I forgot to take the pack, the, I didn't see that barcode on the bottom. Don't worry, you're not going to be sitting here watching me cut the whole row. So that would be extraordinarily tedious. You need to make sure you get a good grip. And I have it lined up there at the uh, inch and a half thick mark line. And I'm making a cut line because this is a lot harder than it, it, than it actually looks to do, especially if you're kind of like me, not the most coordinated person in the world. So you're you know, practically having to saw through these things because they are just that thick. But again, then one and a half inch thick cut ribeye steaks. Now take a look at that. If you, what you see there is a fair amount of fat, but what, I'll get into this in a bit here, but th this, there's a reason this is considered a value cut of ribeye. This is at the very best a USDA select uh, ribeye roast. And I've eaten plenty of select meat in my time, and it's most of the time it's fine, but I think this might've actually been lower than a select. And I'll go into that more towards the end, but, and this is gonna get me to start doing my video that I've been talking about doing on knowing the different grades of USDA meat. But look at that. Huge fat, that, that fat point, my favorite part of the ribeye, is just glorious looking on that thing. And there's the final product. But for two of those roasts, uh, yeah, the one on the left, I think, was the one that we're keeping. I'm not a professional butcher, so they're, you know, in some ways they don't look like the, the cleanest cuts but I think you can save a ton of money doing this yourself. I would have had the butcher at the store do it for us, but he was busy with other things. So I didn't want to wait around, but that is a lot of ribeye steaks. Each one of those was about $70. So we got 140 for $140. We got 18 ribeye steaks. That is a ridiculously good deal. And each of those came in at about a pound, give or take some a little more than a, uh, a pound, but 18 one pound ribeye steaks for $140. You cannot beat that. So what did I do? I threw one into the smoker and that's what it looked like when it came out. That thing was just wait, uh, resting while I waited to put it on the cast iron pan to finish it up. I always smoke my ribeyes when I do this to an internal temperature of 130 or so, but I've lately been driving it, dialing it back to 120 degrees and then finishing it off in the pan like you're seeing here. And I won't bore you too much with a lot of this f cooking video footage, but this is how I do a ribeye. All right, so a note of caution about those ribeye steaks. If you, if the camera had picked up, was able to get really good footage of the actual meat, you'll see very little actual intramuscular fat. Yes, there was a lot of fat on that point and along that sort of outer ridge where you typically see fat on a ribeye, but in the muscle meat itself, there wasn't a lot. Now, I've eaten a lot of USDA select grade steaks, and I'm going to be making a video on USDA uh, standards, what the meat standards are, what their ratings are, you know, select, prime, choice, and the rest, because there's actually a lot of other uh, grades of meat that you don't usually see in the store. And I've eaten a lot of select quality ones because they're cheaper. And that ribeye roast you may have noticed was marked as a value cut. But it didn't say if it was select or choice or prime or anything like that. And I thought it was select until I smoked one. 
one of the ribeyes. And then I pan fried it. And the end result was the toughest ribeye steak I've ever eaten in my entire life. These were not, I don't think these were select. I'm gonna have to show you in another video so you know how to save money on steaks. And I know some of you are in the Oklahoma City area, so I'm curious. Let me know in the comments if you went to the, the store that had these, because uh, some of you said you were gonna hit the store to get them. If you found ran into the same thing that I did, that these were a little tougher than you were expecting. I've had, again, I've had USDA select ribeye steaks before, and they're not as you know nice as a choice or a prime, but they're not usually as tough as these were. So let me know in the comments if you went to Homeland, this is the name of the store, if you're in the Oklahoma City air, metro area and you went and got yourself one of these roasts. Because at $6.49 a pound, they were a good deal, but I wouldn't have paid anything more than that for these. So let me know in the comments. But um, let me know what you thought of this broad video in general in the comments, aside from the technical issues. I'm work, still working some of those out. And I want to be able to do traditional sitting at a table talking to you on camera kind of things while I'm cutting up roasts or whatever in the future when I do these kind of things. Um, and also let me know if there's a national chain store you want me to go to to do a budget haul. We don't have things like HEB. We don't even have a, any kind of Kroger store in Oklahoma. It's the only state in the union that doesn't have a Kroger store. We don't have Safeway, Albertsons, any of that stuff. We do have Aldi. We have Walmart and Sam's Club and Costco are the main stores you've probably heard of here in this state. But I wanna, I'm going to do some gorilla footage if I can at a Sam's Club soon for a budget haul. So let me know in the comments what you thought of all this and like and subscribe if you can. It does help these new channels grow. And as always, try and optimize your day.